NLP technique for compulsion or NLP techniques for compulsion. Uh, as most of you know who have trained with me, I'm an NLP trainer, uh, work with neuro-linguistic programming since the 90s already. Um, most of you know that I'm a little bit different from how I approach things as a trainer, as a coach, than most of people. I, I actually like to bring in neuroscience, positive psychology, um, different scientific pieces to go a little bit further in understanding what I'm working on. So, yes, you can use an NLP technique for compulsion, um, but if you don't understand the, the deeper things to it and the different kinds of compulsions or what that is, the chances are that you're trying to put a band-aid on the wrong part of your body that's not even wounded or somebody else's body. I think there's also often if you don't know what you're doing and what you're talking about then NLP or the wrong NLP technique can quickly can also be a band-aid that comes off the moment that you jump into the pool. So, so what is a compulsion? Well, a lot of people start to think about obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. And there is a huge jump from, let's say, liking things to be a certain way, like liking uh, the kitchen to be clean before you go to bed, or an organized desk, or to be checking if you have your keys on you before you leave, or to even sometimes double check certain things you get the idea that's a really big leap from having a disorder, by the way. So, so what is a compulsion? A compulsion is actually related or is an anxiety. So when you actually want to apply NLP techniques on compulsion or an NLP technique for compulsion, you're actually looking into anxiety-based techniques. So that's one. Another reason why people can be having compulsions or a compulsion is, is because of depression. So that's a, it's a whole other thing. So, so you have to flip that around. So what is a compulsion? A compulsion is something that you feel that you have to do uh, either in terms of an act, a behavior, or a mental act, something inside your brain. And you feel you have to do that. And if you don't do that, you get anxiety, oftentimes, not always, it comes with a what if, a what if based thinking. So what if I don't do this, then there is a, a catastrophizing thinking, then something will fall apart or something will go wrong or, or you know, you get the idea. And so and that, that is also a little bit the measure, right? So when I leave, I double check if I have my keys, which is actually a compulsion. When I don't check my pockets for my keys, let's say, and I, I, I walk out of my villa here in Bali, then I kind of go, oh, shit, do I have them? Do I have them? Did I, you know, and then I check and the anxiety drops and I go to the NLP training venue five minutes from here. Yeah. So, so that's a little bit different. I don't have OCD. OCD is also about having an obsession, obsessive compulsive behavior. So an obsession is like, I'm obsessed to do it. I must do it. And, and so you have no control over that. So it's a whole different thing. So the way that if you're not having a disorder, but you're more like me, having sort of compulsive behaviors that, that makes you feel better. Well, one way to deal with it is, is, is obviously just satisfying it. You know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not like messing with my day to, to check for my keys or to organize my desk or feel that I, I for instance, like to have the, the kitchen, you know, in pristine order before I go to bed, where even the bedroom that I go into may be, may be messy. It's kind of funny how, how that's kind of like, um, sort of directs itself in certain contexts, but not in others. Okay. So one thing to understand about an anxiety is in NLP, we look at thoughts. We look at the body, you know, what does the body display? 
and we look at emotions and feelings and there's a difference between emotions and thinking feelings because emotions is sort of like a tense stomach breathing speeds up you know biological response inside the body and a feeling is more like we we have thoughts about that chemical response inside the body and then we have thoughts about that and then we call it a feeling and then that feeling will make turn into extra other feelings and other thought processes and etc and so in NLP to under, when we look at something like anxiety rather than just playing putting NLP uh, techniques on it an NLP technique for for compulsions it's also we we observe that from another perspective if we're thorough as practitioner I have this rogue hair here right now um, is that we look at the body so what does someone do when they're experiencing an anxiety, right? A compulsion comes with that anxiety. It's like, well, step number one is you need to breathe. Yeah, so when people are experiencing anxiety, they stop breathing. And so, the, of course, when I hold my breath, someone who doesn't have massive compulsions or anxieties, when I hold my breath, eventually it starts feeling like I'm at the bottom of that pool and I'm drowning, so I get anxiety. So the most important th thing is to start breathing, right? And, and so a really cool neurological uh, a, a, a technique that I learned from a certain neuroscientist is how to, to get more oxygen inside the brain and get it to calm down is by a, a double breathing technique, right? And so the double breathing technique is you inhale like this and then you do another inhale after that. So right so you you're up there and then you make your exhale longer than your inhale and so first of all that means that you're getting both oxygen inside the brain that's one and more oxygen inside the brain with a double inhale but also by making your exhale longer you actually allow for the heart rate to slow down so that's like you know when you're not in a massive panic and i assume you're not you know because you're watching this video looking for an nlp technique for a compulsion rather than a disorder i help and so getting that oxygen inside the brain is really helpful so that's one um so you you you, you approach it from a body first perspective the second thing is that what you want to do is in order to drop that anxiety you on that breath you can sort of anchor yourself like a, create a stimulus response that where you set in instance and you need to practice this yeah so when you do this breath you're able to step out of yourself you know so that's in NLP we call that from an, an anxious or a compulsive state you experience associated meaning you're looking through your own eyes you're seeing and hearing and feeling what you would in that moment in this case it's a what if everything screws up thing um, if i don't uh, obsessively clean my house and there's germs there or whatever um, is that you you actually you you actually do the inhale and you step out of yourself you step out of the emotion so you dissociate if you would visualize that that means that you see yourself right so you are looking at yourself from an observer point of view like a scientist and if you train yourself on that inhale exhale uh, to step out of yourself that will be already sort of be a massive a massive uh, benefit right there so that's one thing so teaching yourself how to get the oxygen inside your brain to reduce the anxiety or the compulsion and the second thing is is to step out of yourself so you can get that space inside the brain and dissociate it's important that you interrupt what we call an nlp and pattern in interrupt you interrupt the pattern of the compulsion okay so a lot of people sort of like want to band-aid this with an nlp swish pattern and you may have discovered that for many people the nlp swish pattern is not enough um, and it's also the NLP swish pattern requires you uh, to respond to changes in size, size and brightness. So that's a whole other thing. And so, so getting the breath in, you dissociate and then you interrupt your pattern. So rather than continuing the behavior 
or continuing the thought, what you could do, and that's stealing from the NLP swish pattern, is to sort of like imagine that you could dim that image that you were having and you can kind of push it into the different distance and it becomes small and goes away. But you in immediately need to do something else. You immediately, in that pattern, interrupt. So you take the breath, you anchor that into this dissociation, this calmness. You can dim the image, put it into the distance. Then you immediately, you need to do something else. Now, what you could do is you could go into what we call in NLP, uptime. That's a lot of like a, when, when people teach other people how to drop anxiety, um, it's what they teach them how to do is to actually focus on what's going on outside of you. So for instance, as an NLP technique, you step out of yourself, you step into dissociation, and then instead of going inside, you lo look outside. You start to focus on something outside of you. That could be, I'm gonna focus on five things that I can see, four things that I can hear, three things that I feel touching on my skin or smell and taste. That's a little trick from uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's a great way uh, of combining that with NLP to actually notice what's going on outside of you, right? So that would be one way of solving it, just step out of that space. So that's already one NLP technique or uh, to, to deal with a compulsion. Maybe it's even several techniques at this point because I'm giving you a ton of tips to, to, to play with this using NLP and neuroscience and positive psychology. You can also then top that off by interrupting that pattern entirely is that you can then also then top it off by saying, okay, now I am going to go back inside and I'm going to see hear and feel calmness. I'm gonna see here and feel, you could imagine even a situation or a context where you so feel super calm. You keep breathing and you could imagine like being here in my yard on Bali, you know, or doing the NLP training on Bali, where you can really work on your compulsion and, and, and many other things in your life. It's just to like see here and feel, beautiful forest, beautiful location. Uh, something like that so you can calm yourself down. I mean that you can only do if you're actually by yourself. Huh? So, so you call this grounding by the way. Uh, grounding is looking outside of yourself. But you can also do it within yourself. And if you do that enough by the way, if you do enough grounding like this, visualizations or looking, visualizations within yourself that are calming or or sort of noticing the present moment outside of you, that's called grounding, that if you do that enough, that sort of changes the chemistry, the neurochemistry inside the brain, so that you actually are less prone to re-experience anxiety in the future. If you do that enough, you start healing the brain, that's what I'm trying to say. So it's just, it's an easy way to get the logical part of the brain to quiet down the, um, the, the part of the brain that flags in fear and anxiety. Yeah. So, so recap, NLP for technique for compulsion. Get oxygen inside the brain, step out of yourself, interrupt the pattern, notice what you can see outside of you, hear outside of you, touch outside of you. And then you could also then associate again after that with your mind, in another location where what you see, hear, feel, smell, taste is relaxing in some way. The most important thing is, is that you dissociate and you place your brain, let's say, in the present moment, yeah, so not in the future. Another option is, is to place your brain after the event is over. That's a whole other story but you could check uh, other videos on how I deal with anxiety and how I deal with anxiety using an NLP technique for anxiety that allows you to actually leverage the brain and how to, to future pace or to go past the moment. So that's another recommendation that I can give you uh, on, this, uh, on this channel. You can find 
some other videos on anxiety. Check out the video on social anxiety. It explains it really well, so I recommend you watch that. So this is a series or one NLP technique, the, the way that you look at it, an NLP technique to deal with a compulsion. See you around. If you have interest in, by the way, in receiving some of my visualization on either audio or described in a document, um, just uh, check out the uh, information below and I'll be more than happy to send that to you. Uh, on my newsletter, we're actually sending out um, free NLP techniques twice a month, lots of other great information about positive psychology, about NLP, and of course, you can join us for trainings around the world in Bali, Los Angeles, Mexico, Amsterdam, Miami, etc. See you around.